Chemical Kinetics, Part 6, The Collision Model. This video will help you understand and explain the factors that speed up or slow down a chemical reaction. You will also learn about the Arrhenius equation that describes the relationship between temperature, the rate constant K, and something called activation energy. What affects the rate of a reaction? Based on what we've already looked at, you may know that the concentration of reactants influence the rate of a chemical reaction. When you wrote rate laws, for instance, you included molar concentration raised to whatever the order of the reactant was for that reaction. This is verified by experiments. You may also have noticed that the rate constant depended on temperature. For nearly every reaction, there's an experimental evidence for an exponential increase in the value of K as temperature increases. Before we look at other factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction, let's use the collision model to examine why concentration and temperature influence reaction rates. Rates of chemical reactions are determined by details of the molecular collisions. The collision model starts with an understanding that molecules must run into each other in order to react. So why does increasing reactant concentration increase the rate of a reaction? Well, with more molecules present in the same space, the likelihood of a collision is increased. More collisions means faster reactions. So why does increasing temperature increase the rate of a reaction? Well, since temperature is a measure of kinetic energy, and kinetic energy depends on the speed of the particles, with molecules moving around faster, the frequency of collisions is increased. More frequent collisions means faster reactions. Here's the catch, though. The actual collision frequency is much larger than the reaction rate. So only a small fraction of the collisions successfully produ produces a reaction. Here's why. Activation energy is the minimum energy needed for a chemical reaction. Consider this reaction, the decomposition of BrNO. In order for two BrNO molecules, shown on the left in this graph, to become two NO molecules and one bromine molecule, shown on the right in this graph on the left, in order for that to happen, the activation energy is needed in order to break the two bromine nitrogen bonds. This energy must come from the kinetic energy of the molecules before the collision. This graph on the left is called a potential energy diagram. We see how the energy of the system changes as the reaction progresses. Even though the products in this case, the products down here, have less energy overall than the reactants, producing a delta E that's negative, before the products can be formed, the reactants have to form a high energy arrangement. The activation energy provides the energy needed to produce that high energy arrangement, called a transition state. A transition state is the arrangement of atoms found at the top of that potential energy barrier. Activation energy affects the rate of a chemical reaction, but the overall change in energy does not affect the rate. When molecules collide, if they do not have enough energy, or they aren't moving fast enough, they won't produce the transition state, so the products can't be formed. So at the higher temperature, when molecules are moving faster with more kinetic energy, more of them can get over that hump of activation energy in order to form products, and the reaction rate increases. At the higher temperature, T2, the pink line, the pink curve crosses the dotted line, that's the activation energy, at a point higher than the lower temperature, T1, the blue curve. At that higher point, the higher no there's a higher number of collisions. So at higher temperature, more particles collide with sufficient energy, so the rate of a chemical reaction increases. We've seen why and how reactant concentration and temperature influence the rate of a chemical reaction. But they aren't the only things, are they? Nope. Experiments also show that the, over, the observed rate of a reaction is considerably smaller than the rate of the collisions with sufficient energy to form that transition state. So what else is going on? In order for a collision to produce a reaction, the reactions must also have the correct molecular orientation. The molecules need to line up in certain ways to react when they collide. Even though some collisions have enough energy to produce a reaction, the way the molecules line up to collide may be out of whack. 
in our BRNO decomposition example. Use these three models to help you see what I mean. The top reaction shows the molecules colliding side by side so that the products can form. We have a successful collision there. The middle reaction shows the molecules colliding BRN to BRN so the products can also form. That's another way to produce a successful collision. But in this bottom reaction, no matter what temperature or how fast these particles run into each other, because they're colliding oxygen N to oxygen N, the products won't be formed. Because we need two bromine molecules, excuse me, the bromine molecule needs two bromine atoms, and those are the atoms that aren't colliding. To summarize, a successful collision, that is one that produces products, must have both of these criteria. Number one, the collision must involve enough energy, the activation energy. That way the reactant bonds can be broken and the transition state can be formed. And number two, the collision must have the correct orientation. That way the new bonds in the products can be formed. The Arrhenius equation, shown here is the exponential relationship governing the value of the rate constant k for a chemical reaction. In this equation, a is the frequency factor. That's a value that varies from reaction to reaction. ea is the activation energy, r is the gas constant, and t is the Kelvin temperature. This version of the equation is useful for just calculating k when all the other variables are known. By taking the natural log of both sides, however, we get this version of the Arrhenius equation. The natural log of K equals the negative of the activation energy divided by the gas constant times inverse Kelvin temperature plus the natural log of the frequency factor. In this slope intercept form of the, of the equation we see that by plotting the natural log of the rate constant versus the inverse Kelvin temperature we get a straight line that produces something with a slope equal to negative Ea over R. That means that by collecting data to determine rate constants for a reaction at different temperatures, one can experimentally determine the amount of activation energy needed for a chemical reaction to occur, just by examining the slope. Let's look at an example. What activation energy is needed for the reaction of dinitrogen pentoxide decomposing to form nitrogen dioxide and oxygen? If we do several experiments at different temperatures and determine each rate constant, using methods like the initial rate method or maybe a graphical analysis of the integrated rate law as described in previous videos. We can get data like these here. Some quick calculations to determine the natural log of each of the Ks and the inverse Kelvin temperature for each of the Celsius temperatures will allow us to prepare a graph of natural log of K versus 1 over T. It would look like this graph here. The slope of this line is negative 1.2 times 10 to the fourth Kelvin. Since the slope-intercept form of the Arrhenius equation has slope equal to negative Ea over R, just by multiplying the slope by negative 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, we determine the activation energy for the decomposition of dinitrogen pentoxide to be 1.0 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. The slope-intercept form is useful when multiple values of K and T are known, but if only two values are available, this two-point form can be used or can be derived from the slope-intercept form. It is derived in much the same way as was previously, previously discussed for the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. I could make a video showing that derivation if requested, but here's the equation all the same. This concludes this overview of the collision model of chemical kinetics. This is used to explain and understand the concentration, temperature, activation energy, and molecular orientation effects on the rate constant and the rate of a chemical reaction. If you have more questions, please rewatch this video, reference the appropriate pages in your textbook, or just leave a note in the comments. Thanks again.